Welcome, everybody. This is Conrad Agramont with Agile IT. I'm the CEO here. Uh, we're excited to present another Agile IT Tech Talk. Uh, we make these available uh, for, you know, uh, every week. Uh, we tend to either present something ourselves or bring on a partner. Today, we have Matt Sossman, Microsoft Security Architect from Microsoft, uh, which is which is great. We're, Microsoft is a huge partner of ours. We love doing a lot of things together. Uh, from time to time, they, um, you know, they deliver this with us. And and again, the focus really for Tech Talk is to really get really to the technical pieces. So it's great today because Matt, you know, knows all these things really great. Uh, only a couple slides to just tee things up and he'll get in into the demos. And, you know, the areas that uh, uh, that we wanted to talk to you about today was, you know, we do a lot of things for our customers in Office 365. Um, but, you know, reality is most organizations, maybe all organizations, it's not just all in Office 365, whether you're doing uh, uh, payroll, you're doing HR applications, uh, you're doing known good business things inside of your environment. You want to keep that safe and protected. And you could do that too with some of the capabilities Matt's going to talk about. Uh, but the other part is all those other things you don't know, right? So the, 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 where you don't want to be is that IT director or CIO and finding out that, uh, that the CEO or the board finds out that, hey, or an auditor finds out like, hey, do you know you actually have data in these other locations? One, I didn't even know about that. Two, now that I do, how do I know how to protect it? And then three, how do I know ahead of time of what those things are? So, you know, I'll turn it over here to Matt to, to introduce himself and talk a little bit more about it. But, you know, these are really, really kind of key topics that everybody either is going through today or will go through, but you don't want it to be a surprise. So you can learn through some of these things uh, even better. And a lot of the tools are really integrated and well. Uh, I don't want to take any of this any thunder from from Matt. So, uh, Matt, I'll turn it over to you and uh, uh, take it away. All right, fantastic. Uh, I'm going to share up my screen here in just a moment. Uh, yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for for coming, and for those of you on the recording, uh, thank you so much for investing your time with us. Uh, so, just a quick introduction for me, uh, Matt Sosman. I'm a security architect at uh, Microsoft, and so. I work with our security products across what we call Microsoft 365, which is Office 365, Enterprise Mobility and Security, and Windows 10. And I also work with Azure Security Center. So really all things security across Microsoft. And uh, today I wanna talk about, um, as Connor mentioned, really, you know, we, we, ha we might have these third party applications in use in our environment. Um, you know, the folks in the HR department, they may be using Dropbox or Google Drive uh, because they have a legacy business process that relies on that. And maybe they have to share that data with an outside party like a payroll provider or, um, you know, a legal counsel or a marketing agency. And so uh, for, for us to, you know, go in there and really, you know, change up their world, if you will, um, that could be a lot of change management. Um, that could be a lot of training and adoption. And, and sometimes that's that's just not ideal. So what I want to talk about is how can we enable uh, folks like that to continue to use these kind of third-party cloud applications that bring them under the umbrella of IT. And so I'm just going to share my screen here. Um, I want to show you a quick slide here. And um, hopefully you can see that. And so uh, this slide, it's, it's a, a few years old, and I'm sure these numbers have probably gone up a little bit. But... I find this quite alarming. So if you take a look at Shadow IT and you take a look at the, the Cloud Security Alliance out there, they did a survey of CIOs and 73% of enterprises out there indicated security is a, a top challenge holding them back from SaaS adoption. But on the other hand, 80% of employees at these companies admit to using non-approved SaaS apps. So even though the company hasn't completely gone to the cloud, their employees have already gone to the cloud. And so I, I think that's some, some kind of alarming numbers there and, and something that um, as an IT professional really gets my attention. And so I would just want to spend a moment here and, and talk about, you know, what, what things used to be like, you know, five years ago, maybe just a couple of years ago and, and what it's like now with, with cloud in this new era. Um, you know, if you think about a data center and you think about maybe your company, um, all of your data traditionally uh, was stored in that data center. The data was stored on computers that were managed by your IT department or by um, your partner in crime like Agile IT. And everything was really protected. It was kind of like having a castle with a moat around the castle. Well, times have changed. And so the way times have changed is through bring your own device. 
uh, people are bringing their smartphones to work that aren't, aren't even corporate issued. Uh, you may not have visibility to what's on those smartphones, but they're also bringing their own cloud because it might be easier for them to use Dropbox or Box or Google Drive than it is to use whatever the company has provided them. And so data could be scattered everywhere. Um, I meet customers all the time that uh, are out there using things like Salesforce and, and Workday and, and, and Slack, and nothing's wrong with that because those uh, solutions are helping them get their, get, get their business done. Um, but when it comes to controlling the data across these different clouds and making sure that you're in compliance with things like GDPR or HIPAA or whatever the law of the land is, can make it really difficult. And so how do you how do you take care of this? Well, the, the first strategy or tactic is to really bring it all under one umbrella, and that's using identity. And so if you think about this, um, when you log into each one of these applications, whether it be ServiceNow as an example here on the screen, or Salesforce, or Slack, or Workday, or even Office 365, you're logging in with the same credentials across all of these apps. Well, why is that important? Well, what if you leave the company? Uh, what if you get terminated? When I can disable one set of credentials, one username and password across all of these apps, that's pretty powerful. And then when you get hired, if I can provision just one username and password across all these apps, that's pretty powerful as well. Uh, but what if there's a security breach? What if you get attacked? Well, if I have those credentials and I can disable them across all of those apps, I just minimize the risk of an attacker being able to breach data in all these apps. So identity is kind of this new control plane that's made possible through, through Azure Active Directory. So that's kind of step one. But step two is I still have data spread across all these cloud apps. How do I deal with this? Well, that's where cloud app security comes into play and uh, really Microsoft 365. So I'm gonna share my desktop here and I'm gonna open up a web browser. And what I'm gonna do here is browse out to a product of ours called Cloud App Security. And sign in. This is one of my uh, one of my demo accounts here. And quickly authenticate. Uh, so this is using multi-factor authentication. That's part of Microsoft 365. And what's really cool about this is I'm not having to stumble around for a text message. Um, it actually gets sent to my smartwatch. And so I immediately just see the request for multi-factor authentication or two-factor authentication, click approve my watch, and I'm in. And so we'll give this a moment here just to load. Now, once this loads, this is our cloud app security product. It's part of EMS, which is part of Microsoft 365. And what this allows me to do is have visibility to those third-party cloud apps. So in my environment here, we're using Box, we're using G Suite, we're using Salesforce and Office 365. But if I go to this tool here and I click on activity log, I can see activity for these different cloud apps. So here I can see activity for Salesforce and G Suite and uh, Box is in here as well. I can see when people sign in. I can see when people try to create a file, when they try to maybe add permissions to that file. Um, one of the common challenges I often hear from customers of ours is that uh, we may have files in say Google Drive, but when you go to share that file externally with somebody outside of Google Drive, there's no way for us to keep track of that. So we actually have no idea who has access to our data. Well, this will tell you. So here I could see where uh, uh, different files have been shared. I could just have all sorts of visibility on what's happening across these cloud services, these non-Microsoft cloud services. Uh, here's where somebody actually went into G Suite, Google Drive, and created a new user account. Uh, here's where somebody went to go download a file. It's all right here. Now, what's really interesting is if I want to take this a step deeper, this is get a little bit technical, but I think this is really important to understand that we have this capability. If I drill in this just a step further, here's um, all the different files that are in Google Drive right now. Uh, some of these are being accessed by Adam, Adele, Megan. Well, if I click on one of these, I now have visibility into properties of that file. So I could see the URL of where it's accessed, or where it can be accessed. I can see if they've shared it externally, and if any of those collaborators um, will then show up here. 
I can see who the owner might be. But then if I click on this little three dots, we call that the ellipsis, um, I have some other controls over that. So I can actually remove the person's ability to share. Um, I can grant read only permission. I can transfer the ownership of that file. This is Microsoft going out to uh, G Suite, uh, Google Apps, if you will, and being able to um, govern that data. This is really exciting stuff. And so just to give you another example, here is a file that has a little red exclamation point. That's because I built a policy around it. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, but if I click on the three dots here, I can then go through and view um, some related alerts to that file. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean here in just a moment. But if we take a look at this red exclamation point, it says two policy matches. Well, what I did was I created a policy, and I'll show you what this looks like, where we went through all of the data and all of our clouds that are connected to this thing. So in Box, Dropbox, Salesforce, G Suite, Office 365. And I created a policy that goes through all of those files and looks for anything that has a credit card number in it, a social security number, basically personally identifiable information or financial data. And it came back and said, we actually found some credit card data, some financial data in this Contoso purchasing permissions document stored in Google Drive. And so now I'm actually able to have visibility across what type of data is being stored where. That's really powerful. And so if I drilled in here to control and go to policies, we're going a little bit under the hood, um, but that's okay. We're, we're going to still stay at a high level. I'm going to click on this policy down at the bottom, file containing PCI, so payment card industry inf type information in these apps. And so what this policy is doing is it's looking through all of my applications, Office 365 and everything that's in there, um, anything that might be in Azure, G Suite, Box, um, and Salesforce. And then if it finds anything that has a credit card number, then apply some governance. So here I can expand G Suite and I could say, well, if you find a document that has a credit card number in it, let's remove those external users that are outside my company. Um, let's, uh, let's notify the person who is last editing the document. Hey, you have credit card numbers in here. You may need to handle this differently. Uh, we could do multiple things here. We can maybe CC their manager, CC the, the finance department, whatever it may be. My favorite thing though is this apply classification label. So check this out. So this is using Azure information protection to apply a label. And this can be a label that I create such as credit card data. And now not only will it discover files that have credit card data in it and tell me, but it'll also take an action, apply a classification label, and that label has a security policy tied to it. So if that file gets sent outside G Suite, not a problem, that file is encrypted with this label that's tied to it. And that's using Azure Information Protection. That's another, another topic for another day, but that is a uh, part of Microsoft 365. Now, if I scroll back up here, um, we have a bunch of templates here that I can use. So I can find credit card numbers, I can find PII, here's some HIPAA information, some financial information around the routing number and the bank identifier code, California driver's license number, um, phone number, et cetera. This is really powerful, or you can actually do a, a custom expression. And so from here, I can actually go out and search for keywords. So if I need to look for a, a uh, you know, very sensitive contract, or maybe I'm a law firm and I wanna find anything related to a certain case, I can do that. And so this is where um, folks like Agile IT can come in and really help to define what these policies are and kind of align with your business and then figure out together how we can go out to these other cloud services, govern that data, discover that data, and, and really protect it. Um, and just lastly, if I click on alerts, I have all sorts of alerts that are coming in. Um, I even have a potential alert here for a discovered app security breach. Um, that's pretty interesting. And I'll talk more about that here in just a moment. But let's filter these alerts by app. And let's take a look at uh, just G Suite as an example. So here I can be alerted on different types of activities that happen in G Suite. So here's somebody where um, they're downloading a file to an unmanaged device. So maybe it's a home PC, uh, maybe they're at grandma's house or an airport kiosk. That could be a security risk. If you have an unmanaged device and now has your sensitive corporate data on it, um, there's not much you could do there to protect it. So you need to be alerted when that happens. 
mass download by a single user. Maybe I have an attacker that's breached my uh, breached my system here, and they're trying to download as many files as they can from G Suite. We're being alerted on that. Activity from an infrequent country, impossible travel activity. You log on from a risky IP address. This is looking at login traffic to G Suite. So now I can see if G Suite and my account in G Suite has been breached or hacked. Um, and then I can go out and take action. Um, files shared with a personal email address. Check this out. So this is where somebody, Megan, uh, went to go share this RD expenses spreadsheet with somebody outside the company to a personal like Yahoo or Hotmail or uh, Gmail personal address. So you just get a bunch of great visibility here and what's happening across these other cloud apps. Um, just really tremendous information. I wanna show you one th other thing here. If I go back to activity log um, and I, I filter on box, So here I can see some, some traffic for box and, and login traffic. Now, if I expand one of these, I have a bunch of information available to me. Now this is getting a little bit under the hood and this is where folks like Agile IT can really help you make sense of what, what's it showing you here and, and help you monitor this. But this is where um, we have somebody coming in from an IP address that's associated with the Tor browser. And I can see some different telemetry and information here. But if I click on user, Check this out, I have a map of the world where their frequent locations are. So I could see normally they log in from the United States, maybe uh, maybe the Midwest there, and then they logged in from Italy once. Well, that's not normal for that user. I could see some of their activities here that might indicate a data breach, and I might wanna go out and take action. So, man, so you bring up, you bring up yeah, a great ahead. point because, you know, it's, you know, having such a powerful tool and having, having, it, all that, having it all set up is, is great, but, you know, often we see with customers is you get it all, you're super energized by it for a few months, you fix a lot of policies, you see a lot of change, you impact it, and then six months later, nobody's looking at this, right? So, you, and you could fire off alerts to something else, but even then people aren't, aren't looking at it. So it's one of those things why at Agile IT, we sell this as a service for, so that you can engage us and you can tell us how deep to be involved in, communicate with the customer or not, but whether you use us or you do it yourself or somebody else, Somebody needs, somebody needs to be watching this to just, you know, make sure you follow up because it's no good getting alert if, if nobody does anything, uh, anything about it. But, you know, the view of this is great, right? Especially when you can see who's, you know, who it is, where they are and their pattern to make such a huge difference because you could have just gotten alert. Some other systems just giving you alert and you have no idea, you know, of, of some of this other detail. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's a great point. Um, yeah, you really need to be able to differentiate the signal from the noise. Um, and as you see, I mean, there's a this thing's a Swiss Army knife of features, and so you can get a ton of noise. So we really have to be able to have a, a you know professional there on the other end that can can diagnose this, uh, uh, analyze it, uh, capture that signal, and then go out and take action on on what they see here. Um, so you've seen some really interesting stuff here. How I can see all the activity that's happening in G Suite. I can see files. Uh, and what's happening with those files around something like G Suite or Box. Um, I wanna show you one other thing though. So I'm gonna close out this window and we'll, we'll close out the picture there in my watch. And I'm gonna open up a new browser window here and we're just gonna open a new in private window. And I talked before about single sign-on. That's really what makes all of this stuff work. Um, so if I go to mail.google.com slash a slash sosman.org, um, this is my G Suite tenant that I pay for. When I browse to that, watch what happens. It redirects me to login.microsoftonline.com. And from here, I see my company's background image. I see their logo. I see some verbiage here that my company has. This is really, really important. And the reason why is, it's really two reasons. The first reason is, this is a great way to train my end users to understand when they click on that phishing link in a phishing email, um, if they see something other than my company's background or logo, that might not be the right website. So don't type in your credentials. Um, the second reason why this is important is this gives you a way to standardize your login to all of these cloud services that you use on a daily basis. And that makes it really easy for users to adopt. And because uh, the last thing they want to do is have to sign in and remember all these different credentials. And you know, this gives you a way to just kind of standardize all that. And this is something that Agile IT can help you work, work on to uh, be able to standardize these photos and logos. So I'm going to sign in here. And this is me trying to sign in to Gmail or, or G Suite rather. So I'm going to approve my 
multi-factor authentication request here on my watch, and it's going to sign me in to G Suite. Now, when I get signed in, watch what happens. So going a little bit under the hood here, but up in this address bar, look where it's going. It's actually going to a Microsoft data center here micro, on Microsoft.com, .cas, .ms. And look what it shows here. It says access to G Suite is being monitored. To, for improved security, organization allows access to G Suite in monitor mode. So this is telling me that I can only access this from a web browser, and there's policy behind this. And one of the policies is actually preventing me from downloading a file locally. So if we play out a scenario here for a moment, um, let's say you're traveling and you log in from a, an airport kiosk or the, ho the computer at the lobby of the hotel, or maybe just personal computer at home. Well, that computer is not managed by your company. It's not managed by Agile IT and it's not managed by just IT in general. So you really don't wanna have to download data to that computer because you don't know where it's gonna go. You don't know who's gonna see it. Well, here I'm inside my, my G Suite email here. If I click on an email and I go to download an attachment, so here I have an attachment to PowerPoint. If I go to download this, watch what happens. Boom, download blocked. Downloading killchain.pptx, the PowerPoint, is blocked by organization security policy. I cannot download it at all. Now you're probably wondering what's this down here at the bottom. Well, that is actually just a little uh, uh, text message here. It's saying the file was blocked and I have some information I could pass along the help desk if I have any questions. But that's pretty big. I cannot download corporate sensitive data onto any computer that's not being managed by, by my company. And so this really opens up the door for uh, really new possibilities. And this is all made possible through Cloud App Security, what I just showed you, which is part of Microsoft 365. And this is just one of those policies that I talked about. Uh, yeah. So really interesting stuff here. Yeah, that, that, that's great, Matt, because a lot of times companies have maybe internal, you know, like you know, employee handbook kind of policies, right? Don't do this, don't share. But no real way, way to enforce it. Um, and then even once they try to enforce things, the, the general feeling or maybe just the, the, the general starting point within Office 365 is, well, but it's all going to be stored here and I have, you know, what if people work around the system? So this really starts to allow you to define a, an overall policy. And a lot of times we think policy, we think compliant and regulated and, you know, like, but I'm not regulated. I don't have policies, but, you know, I might have some things I don't want out, right? It's because of a con you know contractual obligation I have, or it's embarrassing, or it's my price list, or it's, intellectual property, my processes, trademark, content, I mean, all these sorts of things why you you wouldn't want to get it out um, and you you know, you know really want to protect it. And now at least you have some assurance to both to, to, to see if people are doing something wrong and, and to protect it. You know, you uh, sometimes, you know, and I've used this before and I'll continue to use it all the time is, is sometimes it's good people trying to do good things, but end up doing something bad uh, that, you know, they were sending it to, you know, this document to a partner um, they thought it would be good because it'd be faster and, um, you know, they sent it and, and they're trying to do something good and, you know, they're a good person, but they, but they didn't really realize that they were actually doing something wrong and that the IT in corporate perspective, you can kind of protect them. So it's not so much as, you know, uh, marking them as a bad person, but just, you know, uh, enabling them to not make those types of mistakes. And instead, maybe they should have made a team site and, and added, added somebody as like, you know, that partner is a guest and then they have access to the content and it's still protected. So all these things start to play with one another. And I think, you know, this, this I think starts to demystify a little bit about what shadow IT is um, and a little bit more about protecting things. That's just not all Office 365. So it's, you know, I think this is a pretty powerful uh, demo and I appreciate you kind of kind of going through that. Um, let me see, uh, was there one more thing you wanted to show on this, Matt, or maybe we no, want to open it up? This is it, let's go ahead and open it up.